Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube, and today we are bringing you another Flute Center of New York sponsored review. So every month I team up with the Flute Center of New York to bring you guys monthly flute review videos. And this month we're gonna be looking at the Haynes Amadeus 680 and 780 flutes. Just a quick note, if you're noticing that I'm sounding particularly nasally right now, it's because it's allergy season and it's hit me really bad. Yes, I have have a wrist brace on but it's just from really horrible posture at the computer not flute related at all because apparently I'm not exciting enough for that for those of you who know how these reviews go you can skip on over to when the review actually starts but if you're new around here I want to let you guys know about a couple of perks that you can get using my code JAF when you order an instrument through the Flute Center of New York number one you get free domestic shipping within the US they will charge the shipping up front but they will refund it back to you once you return flutes that are out on trial number two Two, you get an extended 10 day trial usually it's only seven days number three you get an extended 18 month warranty on your new flute and number four you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time just be sure that you're actually in the market to buy before you actually get flutes out on trial also the flute sign of new york price matches any other authorized dealer so you always know that you're getting the best bang for your buck and to be completely transparent i do earn a small commission on each flute that is purchased through the flute sign of new york using my code jaf now let's say you want to take flutes out on trial Trial. All you have to do is contact the Flute Center of New York using their email or phone. I will put a link to their contact info in the bottom bar below and they'll take care of things from there. When trying flutes, make sure you take off all rings and dangly jewelry that could potentially scratch the flute. Never use the polishing cloth, the swabbing cloth, or the cleaning rod that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet. And lastly, just a quick disclaimer, every flute is placed each flute differently. Like in Harry Potter, just as the wand chooses the wizard, so the flute chooses the flutist. My my job is just to describe to the best of my ability how I think these flutes like to be played, but it is up to you guys to decide for yourself which flute matches you the best. All right, so with all that said and done, let's finally jump into this review. What I found on these Amadeus flutes was that they actually come standard with a professional Haynes classic hand cut sterling silver head joint. Amadeus is basically like the sub brand of Hanes. You still get the same sound as the parent company, but it is made to be a lot more affordable. One of the best ways to keep that sound from the parent company is to have part of the flute actually be directly from the parent company. So in this case, and in actually in most cases, it's the head joint. So if you were to purchase these flutes, you would actually be getting a full on Hanes head joint. So I think that's really cool that you can get something so affordable but still have pretty much a professional head joint. Just so you know, I'm not actually going into these flutes completely blind because I have tried a good number of Haynes flutes now. When I tried these, I was definitely trying to see if it had that same power that I am expecting from a Haynes. Spoiler, yeah, mm -hmm, it does. These guys come in your very typical French model flute case. So there is an inner case and then you have an outer case. So this outer case is made out of like a woven nylon. Inside is like a plush lining. The other one is actually a black plush. It's really the same thing. I think they just got a different color, like that's it. Now, what I noticed, Hanes being a little extra and I kind of love it. They actually engraved their logo and the Amadeus name right onto the actual inner case. I almost missed it. It just happened to catch the light correctly in my room and I saw it. Comes with a microfiber polishing cloth. This is really good quality stuff, really thick. Congratulations and thank you card. And on the back is actually has your information about the warranty on your flute. Shoulder strap. It seems like they went for like a more upgraded shoulder strap. Very typical wooden cleaning rod. And they include an extra baggie of plugs. So now we're actually going to play around with these flutes. Let's start with the Haynes Amadeus 680. Haynes Amadeus Sterling Silver 0.925 head joint, silver plated body and mechanism, drawn tone holes, French open hole model, pointed key arms, tuned at A equals 442, 0.016 inch tubing, so that's standard wall tubing, offset or inline G, so you can pick either, and B foot joint. Just a quick note about the A equals 442. Even though in the States, we 
tuned to A440. Flutes are typically tuned to A442, so you have more wiggle room in case, you know, wherever you're playing is like super cold or something and you go super flat. Now let's see how this guy sounds. again with my lovely diagram. In case you guys don't know what is going on here, we are looking at the cross section of our mouth. These are your lips. These are your teeth. This is the roof of your mouth. And this is your tongue. None of this is anatomically correct. I am aware. This is just the best way for me to describe how I feel things are working inside of my mouth. For this 680, I'm imagining that there's a small ruler, like a bendy ruler like this one, inside of my mouth. The bottom part of the ruler is kind of like stuck in the hollow behind my bottom front teeth. If I am playing lower notes, the top of the ruler bends downward. The higher and higher I play, the more it bends further and further up. So this is like middle register-ish. High register, I feel like it's, it's like that. You're using this top part of the ruler as almost like a runway for your airstream. It forces this part of your mouth to be super open and it forces like the back of your mouth to be super open. You kind of feel the bend in the ruler halfway-ish, almost two thirds the way into your mouth. It doesn't ride against your, the roof of your mouth and it doesn't ride super low either. It's just right in the middle. Right here, the lower part of your mouth is super open. And I think that's what gives this flute that like crazy, powerful, chasm sound is the best that I can describe it, like it's a really big sound that requires a lot of air behind it. And if you're gonna put a lot of air behind it, you need a lot of room in your mouth, which is exactly what imagining a ruler like this will do. The interesting thing about how this whole bottom area remains open is that it remains that open no matter which register you're playing in. So this is across the entire range. Now let's play with harmonics. <laughs> If you play the harmonics exactly the way we just described with the imaginary bendy ruler, the harmonics pop out so easily. It's remarkable how easy the fifth harmonic comes out. It feels the equivalent of the fourth harmonic on other flutes. And so, of course, getting the sixth and the seventh harmonic also comes out really, really easily. Those high notes are effortless. Also, if you think about this bendy ruler business, it's pretty intuitive. The lower you go, the lower you aim the air, the higher you go, the higher you aim the air. So it's intuitive, plus it's easy to get those high notes out. So this is very, very appropriate for a developing student. Now let's play with tone color. <laughs> I'm gonna try to attempt to draw this in 3D. If you want a richer tone, you make the ruler as fat and wide as possible. Widen it as much as you can. Because you've widened it so much, you'll need to pour more air out too to kind of like fill up the space of the entire ruler. To get a hollow tone, the top part of the ruler I curl it upwards and inwards like that, but the bottom is still nice and flat. It's kind of like when you curl your tongue into a U shape, like that's what you're doing to the top of the ruler. And then you kind of funnel your air through that curled bit. I find that the more you curl it, the hollower and like the less resonant it gets. If you curl it into like a straight up, just like a circle, then you get like a really, really, really hollow kind of like very non-resonant, but like really kind of like mysterious, kind of creepy sound. But if you want a little bit more of a shimmer to it, just open it back up a little bit more. And now for dynamics. <laughs> The 
the louder you want to play, the bigger you make the ruler. So it's not just wider, but the whole thing, you just kind of imagine it to be bigger. You can make it like go further back in your mouth too, as big as you can possibly make it. When you are making it smaller, I find that the placement of the ruler stays the same. Super teeny tiny, but you still imagine that kind of bent ruler, but it's like in the middle. So the most important part in your mouth to keep open on this flute is right in the middle. You even need it for a piano. Obviously, Obviously, you will also have to lip up to correct the pitch, but that is standard on all flutes. And now for the mechanism. The main keys of this flute airs on the side of being a little bit resistant. The keys do bounce back quite nicely, but they don't bounce back as energetically as I guess I personally was expecting. So there is still a little bit of resistance with them coming back up again. This kind of level of resistance is perfect for developing flutists. And what I mean by that are students that are actually still actively growing. Their hands are growing, their arms are growing. Essentially what growing students have to deal with is constant adjustment. For example, like if you're adjusting how fast your fingers move, if the keys bounce up too quickly and are too responsive to you, you may end up having to re-practice much longer in order to get things to sound more even. So definitely this flute is perfect for people who need a little bit of like a buffer zone in the mechanism to allow them to play a little bit more evenly before their hands stop growing and they can finally have a flute that is like super responsive, super bouncy, etc. With the main keys not bouncing as much as I am personally used to, I was actually surprised by how bouncy the C trills were. That's exactly what you want for trill keys is for them to be really bouncy because that's what gives it that like super energetic sound. But they are still a tad resistant, which matches the rest of the keys. The B flat lever also shares the same level of resistance as the rest of the keys. And lastly, the gizmo is placed extremely high. So this is perfect for people with bigger hands, larger fingers, who would have a harder time finding the gizmo key if it was too close to the rest of the keys. And now for articulation. What I find is because we've had this little imaginary ruler in our mouth. If you were to tongue up here, you kind of obstruct the top part of the ruler, which is primarily where your air is rushing. So I found that when I tongued here on the back of my teeth, it still created a thumping sound. So I had to tongue like like a true faux French tonguing between my teeth. You feel like you're almost tonguing against your bottom teeth. If I think about it more, I can actually kind of feel it against my top teeth, but more so against my bottom teeth instead. For double tonguing, because your tongue is down all the way here, I find that I have to imagine that my double tongue like hits the front part of the roof of my mouth. If you can do this, your double tonguing sounds amazing. It's clear, it's fast, because it's all happening at the tip of your tongue. This is very reminiscent to me of Baroque type double tonguing, where if you read Quance's book about like flute method and whatever, you use the syllable diddle, which if you say diddle, 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 you're basically doing what I'm describing here. In my head, I was still thinking taka, but I was just thinking super far forward. I tried out Midsummer Night's Dream. I'm not gonna put it in this video though, because I don't feel like dealing with copyright things. I've never been able to go that fast. It still feels weird to me because this is not the normal way that I double tongue. I think out of all flutes I've ever tried so far, double tonguing on this flute is the most 
far forward ever. All right, so now it's time to play with the 780. Let's go over the specs first before we do that. We are looking at a very similar flute. Again, we have the Haynes Amadeus Sterling Silver 0.925 hand cut head joint. You are working with the same head joint actually. Sterling Silver body with silver plated mechanism. So here the entire flute is solid silver except for the keys. Drawn tone holes, French open hole model, pointed key arms, tuning is A equals 442, 0.016 standard wall tubing, offset or inline G, and B foot joint. Knowing that it was solid silver throughout, I was now expecting a sound that's even richer, has a little bit more shimmer, projects more, there's a little bit more depth to the sound. And that's exactly what I got. <laughs> imagine because we are working on the same head joint but on two different bodies the way you play the 780 is extremely similar to how you play the 680 except for one thing the bottom part sticks downward more so it forces my whole jaw to open downwards more that means that this chasm here is even bigger than on a 680 therefore you can put even more air through the 780 and the 780 projects even more. The sound has a lot more depth and I think that's partly because it does force you to literally have more depth in your mouth. And I noticed that the sound on the 780 is naturally a lot warmer than on the 680. I think that's because it's more silver content. I can't help but think that it does have something to do with the fact that you just have that much more space in your mouth to play around with. Now for harmonics. <laughs> Harmonics pop out super easily on the 780. Like, wow. I will say that the top harmonics are just a tad bit more challenging for me. It's kind of a stretch to kind of have this imaginary bendy ruler be like all the way up here, you know, while the bottom is also down all the way there. So I do kind of feel like I'm playing the flute like, but the sound you get is amazing. I noticed on the harmonics that the 780 does require this bendy ruler to kind of be placed just a hair back. But I mean, it's not the most noticeable either. So I, I think that part really just depends on the player. Based on your mouth formation, one is going to feel more natural than the other. Now for tone color. <laughs> I feel like you can get richer, you can get deeper, you can get far more resonant. So it's basically like if you took the 680, but you extended the parameters of its abilities. When you go for that hollow tone and you like curl up the top of the ruler, I find that it's a lot easier to get a natural shimmery sound in the hollow tone than you can on the 680. You have to work a little bit more to get that creepy sound. Now for dynamics. Again, same idea as a 680, but your range is way bigger. You can make the ruler much bigger and this flute can take a lot of air. I feel that this head joint is so free blowing that you can overdo it. So if you want the flute to kind of like help you play louder, this one definitely will. And for your pianos, when you make them like super, super tiny like this, you can get even softer than on the 680 and sustain it. And now for the mechanism. <laughs> I 
basically, if the body is made from a different material than the other model that I was looking at, but they share the same mechanism, I can usually still feel slight differences between the two. But for this, literally everything feels the same. Same kind of resistance, the trill keys feel the same, the B flat lever feels the same, the gizmo feels the same. Like it is exactly the same. It just shows that Haynes makes sure that their work is consistent among all fleets. Like that, that's really impressive. And lastly, articulation. My tonguing is still faux French tonguing, but your tongue grazes your top teeth more than your bottom teeth. This is by far much more typical of tonguing on flutes that I have tried. I feel like your tongue kind of goes up to around there. So it, it's actually still very far forward. It's still within the front half of the roof of your mouth. Quick little trick to help you tongue like this is to think of the K part of your double tonguing as K. You will naturally tongue further forward in your mouth than if you say K. If you say K, your tongue will go all the way back to the back of your throat. You'll end up swallowing your sound. Your airstream can't get past the K when it does that. It bogs down the tonguing like crazy if you think of it as ka. All right, and that is my review of these two beautiful Hanes Amadeus flutes. Let's now talk about how much they cost. The 680 costs $1,640. You can choose either offset or inline G. That does not add an extra cost. But if you want the split E mechanism, that does cost an additional $110. And you can only do the split E mechanism on the offset G. That's just how the mechanism works. Like you can't fit split E mechanism on inline G. You also have another head joint option, the silver lip plate with a 14 karat gold riser, and that would be an additional $420. So if you wanted a little bit more of that gold sound, that's the one that you would try. The 780 costs $2,540. This flute has the exact same options that you can get as the 680. I think this is great bang for your buck. As a teacher, it brings breaks your heart a little bit when you know your student has been doing really well but then they have a growth spurt and it's like everything is out of alignment and I just feel like these flutes are designed to kind of like make that process less of a suffering. For those teachers who are looking for flutes for their students, definitely look into these ones for your more serious ones. And there we have it. That is my review of these gorgeous flutes. Let me and the Flute Center of New York know in the comments below what other flutes you would like for us to review for you guys. Not only do I read your comments, but the Flute Center of New York reads them as well. Make sure to follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I will put a link to all their social media networks down below. If you want to catch me during the week, you can also find me on my my social media which are also listed just right below here. This is my last video which I will put a link to up here for you guys. If you like this video make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. Also hit that bell icon to be notified of when I actually post and if you want to support me even more you can head on over to my Patreon. I do hang out there quite a bit but otherwise I will see you guys next week. Bye!